Lung cancer is one of the most common cancers in our country. It happens to be the top four cancers which our people are suffering from. That is why it is important that we understand that what are the causes, what are the risk factors and how we can take care of it so that our loved ones or we don't suffer from it. So talking about lung cancer, the first and the foremost question which comes in our mind is why does it happen and what are the causes for lung cancer? Lung cancer is one of the tobacco related diseases. The first and the foremost cause of lung cancer is tobacco and mainly smoked tobacco. And that can be either beery, it can be cigarette, it can be hookah. So all the forms of smoked tobacco are one of the leading causes of cancer. Whatever you smoke, these cigarettes, these beeries, they contain as many as 7,000 hydrocarbons. And out of these 7,000 hydrocarbons, almost 40 are the bad ones. And on these, seven are those which are 100% known to cause cancers. That is, they are class one carcinogens. So tobacco being the first and the foremost cause. The other causes include certain mutations. So when there is a cell in our body, it divides into two. During that process of division, there are a lot of changes which happen at the DNA level. Many a times there are certain defects, but our own body takes care of it. There are repair mechanisms, they repair the defects and cells divide normally. But in patients who get cancer, these repair mechanisms are defective. So what happens that our own body's check mechanism, that is the policemen of our own body, cannot figure out that some cells have gone abnormal. And these grow and become into cancers. So mutations can also cause cancers. Exposure to certain pollutants, certain uh, industrial things like asbestos, people who are working in the industry, in the mining industry, they are exposed to these inhalants. These can cause certain lung cancers. There are people who would have cancer developed in certain scars. For example, if somebody had suffered from a long-standing infection and in the lung there is a scar, there can be a tumor across it. Usually these tumors are adenocarcinomas. So there are multitude of factors, but primarily the one thing which is in your hand is tobacco. So tobacco cessation is first and the foremost step if you want to reduce your risks of developing this cancer. So if you are having cancer, how would you know that? So after establishing the cause, the next step is to know what are the symptoms of lung cancer. Lung cancer symptoms are very similar to many other lung conditions. So that is why sometimes people cannot understand and they delay their diagnosis because they keep presuming that probably it is because of some uh, pneumonia, some tuberculosis, because the commonest symptom which the lung cancer can cause is cough. Cough which is long standing, it is not getting relieved and at times it is also accompanied with some blood coming in the sputum can be indicative of an underlying cancer. Apart from cough, blood in the sputum, there can be change in the voice, there can be pain in the chest, particularly the tumours which are closer to the chest wall, the outer region of the chest can cause pain. There can be a lot of uh, weight loss if the tumor has disseminated and has gone to the other parts of the body. In these situations, there will be cachectic appearance. Patient will start to appear very, very frail and bony. So advanced cancers tend to cause symptoms which are of weight loss and cachexia. There are certain paraneoplastic syndromes also. Lung cancer is very well known to cause certain paraneoplastic syndromes. What do we mean by paraneoplastic syndrome? So sometimes tumor cells, they secrete certain chemicals and these chemicals go to a part very distant from the main tumor and they throw symptoms. Like a patient with lung cancer may have low sodium levels because of change in the antidiuretic hormone in the brain. So patient will have fainting attack, weakness because it is causing low sodium. So these are paraneoplastic syndromes which are rarely seen in less than 10 to 15% cases of lung cancers. So if somebody is having this set of uh, uh, you know, symptoms, what should be your next move? The next move is to meet a clinician. So you should approach a health facility to evaluate yourself to exclude that it is not a cancer. See, it can be many other diseases, but unless you meet a doctor, you cannot establish the cause of all these symptoms. So the first set of tests the doctor is likely to do is an X-ray of the chest. 
X-ray of the chest gives us a reasonable information about any opacity, any patch in the lung, which based on you know this position, its architecture, its shape, can indicate what is the cause for cough. There may be just pneumonitic patches, there may be just pleural effusion, which can be because of tuberculosis as well. But the location of these spots and their typical appearance guides the doctor onto what it is. If there is a suspicion that it can be a cancer, doctor will order a CT scan of the chest. He may order a PET CT scan when he is very much confirmed that it is definitely a cancer to know how advanced the tumor is. After radiology, the next step is confirmation of diagnosis. The confirmation is always done by some needle test. It might be a fine needle test where a very small tiny needle prick is done. Some tumor cells are taken out from this tumor. They are seen under the microscope to type that what type of cancer it is because cancer in itself is a huge spectrum of diseases. It can be a small cell, it can be a non-small cell, it can be squamous cell or adenocarcinoma. So all these can only be confirmed once some needle test has been done. In some cases, a simple fine needle aspiration does not give us all the information we are seeking. There we do a biopsy. It will be a true cut or a core biopsy where the number of cells which we can take out are much more. And we can subject these cells to further tests like genomic sequencing, immunohistochemistry, which help us in defining our treatment as well. So after having a radiology, after having a biopsy, the next step is what is the stage of disease? Because it is the stage of the disease which dictates what will be the treatment. So for staging, as I told you, we will conduct a PET CT scan. We may also conduct an MRI of the brain because in lung cancer, sometimes there is hidden disease in the brain in few cases, which needs to be known right from the beginning. After having all these tests, we stage these patients into stage 1, 2, 3 and 4. There are a lot of sub-staging, I will not dwell on to those details. But as an overview, I will tell you how we treat these patients as per the stage. So coming to treatment, there are three major modalities of cancer treatment. Surgery, radiation and chemotherapy. So depending on how big the tumor is, where is the location, whether it has involved the lymph nodes, the decision is taken. And these decisions are taken by all the doctors in conjunction. It is a multi-modality approach. All the doctors sit together in tumor boards, discuss the patient's parameters, patient's performance status, all the findings of test, and then a plan is charted out and that is implemented. For stage 1, majority of patients, if they are having good breathing functions, they can be subjected to a surgery. Surgery remains the treatment. Based on what we find in the surgery, sometimes some additional treatment in form of chemotherapy may be required, but mostly in stage 1, surgery alone is sufficient. A small segment of patients who are elderly where they are not fit to undergo surgery, instead of surgery, a very targeted radiation is done that is called stereotactic body radiation, SABR or SBRT, where a very high dose of very, very precise localized radiation is delivered over a period of 3 to 10 days and that takes care of the tumor. Beyond stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, it is majorly surgery or chemo radiation. If there are multiple lymph nodes in the chest, they are fixed and there is an extensive disease, then chemo radiation remains to the be treatment of choice. So by chemo radiation, I mean that there will be a long duration of treatment, around six weeks of radiation, which will be delivered Monday to Friday, five days in a week, and weekly basis chemotherapy will be done along with it. After completion of six weeks of treatment, there will be a segment of patients who will become eligible for immunotherapy. Stage 4 patients is a unique entity. So stage 4 in itself is also a huge spectrum. There may be a stage 4 where there is a lung tumor and there is a tiny spot in the brain. On the other side, there may be a stage 4 where there is a lung tumor. At the same time, there is tumor in the bones, the liver and multiple other organs. So the treatment of both these modalities uh, is different. In uh, the extensive metastasis, chemotherapy is the mainstay of treatment. And if there is some pain, if there is some bleeding, sometimes radiation may be also added as an adjunct. Whereas the ones where there are very limited metastasis, we call it oligometastasis, the attempt of treatment is curative. Here, the 
prolonged chemo radiation as i explained previously that is conducted and the metastatic site is also addressed with some local modality so this is how lung cancer is treated so if i can sum it up stage 1 treatment of choice is surgery alternative is radiation for medically ineligible patients stage 2 preferably surgery stage 3 surgery in some but majority stage 3 get chemo and radiation in conjunction stage 4 the mainstay of treatment remains to be chemotherapy immunotherapy and at times radiation as well so if we talk of outcomes in this stage grouping particularly stage 1 the outcomes are very good but as the stage progresses towards stage 4 the five year survivals tend to decline so the importance is that if you are getting in touch with your medical fraternity in time and the diagnosis is done in earlier stage the treatment modalities required to treat you will be lesser and the outcomes will be rewarding so it is high time if there are smokers in the family or there are people who are having intractable cough they should meet the medical specialist thank you so much